<laughs> All right, Natalie, how are you doing this afternoon? Hi, I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me, Chad. <laughs> yeah, I'm um, really excited about this. One of the one of the missions of Boondocks is to really try to get ladies involved in in being more proactive in their own personal protection piece. And so, you know, we we talked a little bit last month, and I was really excited to see you know what you're doing to help that that agenda as well. So. Um, what I'd like to do is kind of ask a couple questions about yourself and how you started Elegant and Armed and, and, uh, and try to get some feedback of what you do or how you can encourage ladies in, our, in, the, um, in, in the environment to take a more proactive approach to this process. So tell us a little bit about yourself and Elegant Armed, if you don't mind. Sure. Well, I've been writing the blog Elegant and Armed for about five years. And I write about firearms, safety, um, a little bit about training, but a lot of it about concealed carry fashion for women. Um, when I started concealed carrying a while ago, there I didn't really know how to do it, and there wasn't a lot of information online. So I just started purchasing holsters and trying to make them work with all my outfits, and I just kind of was learning as I went. So I started posting about it on Instagram, and then eventually that turned into the blog uh, because I just wanted to share my journey with other women and encourage them that, hey, if I can do this, you can do this too. Yeah, that's right. And I think everybody goes to that trial and error phase on trying to find holsters and that so on and so forth. And, and I think one of the great things about the, the blog that you have is it at least points people in the right direction, the starting point, because otherwise mm -hmm. you can spend hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars on stuff trying to find out what works for you. Um, and, and what works for one person may not work for the other person. Uh, but it's, it's interesting that you started five years ago on this journey. What was the catalyst that pushed you down this journey? Oh, sure. So my dad had actually purchased the concealed carry class as a Christmas present for everyone in the family. And I took it as a fun thing to do, but I never thought that I would really use it. So it wasn't until I finished college and moved out of my parents' house that I realized I was coming home to a dark house every night. And I just started feeling um, kind of vulnerable in a way that I never really had before. And I remembered from that class that if something bad were to happen, it could take the police, you know, minutes at best to get to me. So by then an altercation would be over. And I, I realized I need to be able to protect myself if I need to. Yep. And, you know, sometimes I think that ladies, it, it's really a tragic event or some kind of really dangerous event that triggers them to to do that but i'm glad that your dad got you involved in that and you kind of started seeing the need for that and maybe something in that class triggered you to think oh okay i see how this could turn bad quickly without without being able to protect myself so i'm glad you 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 took him up on that i'm glad your dad made you do that that's, that's awesome <laughs> thanks i know me yeah. too <laughs> so next question here is on this journey what are some common myths about women in concealed carry out there Oh, sure. Well, one myth that I was concerned about was that if I choose to conceal carry, it might change who I am as a person. Like maybe it will make me more heartless or violent or or even masculine. <laughs> so I considered it to be a masculine thing back then. I don't anymore. But um, when I first started out, I was determined to find a way to still be myself, still keep my style and be able to conceal carry. And I think I did that by finding um, multiple types of holsters so I could carry with every outfit that I wanted to carry. carry. Um, you know, men a lot of times will put a holster on a belt with a pair of pants uh, or dress pants, but women, we have leggings, dresses, skirts, um, fitted tops, like there's a lot of different options. Um, so one thing that busted that myth was just having the different types of holsters so I could still dress like a woman and still be safe. Um, and But I did find out also, just because you carry a gun, it doesn't change who you are. It doesn't make you heartless. Um, I still have the same love for people and value for human life. Uh, I'm just able to defend myself if I need it. Right. 
And I, I think that's an important part. And I really like that. What you said about that is that people think, well, I've got a gun. And the first thing I'm going to do is go out there and start, you know, getting involved in conflicts and shooting people. I, what, what, and now what you're founding, or at least I think what you probably would found is that the more training that you have, the least likely you are to get involved in something. You know everything that can go wrong. And just because you have a firearm doesn't mean that you can solve all the world's problems. What it means is you have a tool to protect yourself at a last resort type issue. And you're going to much rely on much more rely on your, your awareness and stuff to avoid confrontations and stuff. And so um, that, that is a big myth that people think, well, if I go get training, that means I'm going to be like taught how to shoot and kill people. That's, that's not what most training. <laughs> classes are about, so, like, right. I have to tell you a little story about that. So my roommate at the time, um, she, she didn't carry or anything, but we were on a walk and we were passing by this road in our town that was kind of known for drug deals and she wanted to walk down it. I said, no, let's not go that way. Let's go another way because, you know, situational awareness and just being smart. And she said to me, well, don't you have your gun? I say, I said, well, yes, but I don't want to use it. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that was a misconception too, that if you have a gun, you're just going to go into all these dangerous places confidently on purpose, you know? Right. But, so yes, I and and I think uh, the answer you gave was one hundred percent correct. I don't want to go there because I might have to use it. There's a better chance that I would use it there than if I would go this way. So let's go the way that I don't have to use it. So exactly. Now let's also talk a little bit about um, you know if, if you take the average uh, female that may be looking to get into the concealed carry options and they go to the gun store and they go with their husband or their boyfriend or some other uh, uh, their father or some other male figure and stuff and they walk into a gun store they see all these types of holsters that clip to their belt and, and so on and so forth and I like what you said that you wanted something that you could keep your old style so what are some of the great options that you have found that would make a, a woman still feel like she can dress and be stylish the way she used to and still carry a firearm what are some great options for them Yes, there are a lot of great options. I know it can depend on your body type and what you find comfortable. But um, when I first started out, I used a belly band. I found that to be more comfortable than a belt and a kydex holster. Since then, I've gotten used to conceal carry, and I actually do prefer a belt with a kydex holster attached to it. Um, I have a blog post called The Best Concealed Carry Belts for Women. And there's a bunch of belts on there, but one of them is the groove belt and it's very, it's, it's sturdy. It'll support your gun, but it also has some stretch to it. So it kind of moves with your body. Um, I think that's a good option. I do use the Dean Adams thigh holster shorts for dresses and skirts. And the Enigma holster is another good one that's very versatile and has that hard trigger cover on it. Yeah, that's one that just recently came out. I've seen a lot of good news. I've got a, a lot of good reviews on that one. So it um, allows you to kind of dress around the uh, the option without having to um, to wear a belt type stuff. So which mm -hmm. sometimes can be a big a big hurdle for ladies because a lot of the clothes they have don't have belt loops on them. So, you know, that, that's right. an option. Yeah. And, you know, I, I do I use a version of the belly band. I, I did one uh, blog post not too long ago about the uh, fusion pack that I use when I go work out of the gym because I don't have a traditional belt on there and i like it because it's got a combination of the kydex hard kydex outer shell but still comfortable you know where with the belt so the yeah, enigma is one that i've been looking at too but it is uh you know it, it's a whole system you've got to kind of get used to that one so i'm making a note of that to check it out actually i haven't seen the fusion belt yeah so it's a, a tack to pack fusion pack so it's it's kind of a, like a a soft neoprene backing with the hard kydex shell that's designed for the particular model gun that you carry so Okay. Thanks. So, yeah, the belly bands are great, but they they're sometimes not. They're very they they fit all kinds of different guns, and they're not necessarily the mm -hmm. best fit for the particular gun you have. They fit all kinds of guns. They don't fit your gun the best. So. Okay. <laughs> so, but I, I think you probably learned that as well. So. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So another question here: What are some of the benefits or barriers you have faced as a woman in the CCW world? Oh sure. Well, I think the biggest benefit is, I hear this all the time, people say I don't look like the type to carry a firearm. And really, um, I, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of petite, I dress femininely, and I, I think I have a, a bubbly personality. Um, but that 
can work to your favor, girls, if, if you don't look like the type because um, having the sense of surprise, the element of surprise can be on your side. So if an attacker is after you, just disrupting his plan or her plan in any way can often discourage them from continuing. Right. I think, yeah, that's a major plus. Yeah, but, I mean, they're also not expecting it for somebody that, that, that uh, uh, looks like you or acts like you. They're not expecting that. So as soon as you turn the table on them, that changes their mindset. And all of a sudden, they haven't had a plan to deal with that, and they, they leave the scene. That, that's usually what you see. So. Yeah, yeah. As far as barriers, I think finding, well, the right type of clothing to conceal your firearm and um, depending, it could be also finding the right type of firearm. For me, I was had to find that perfect balance of a small gun that I can conceal easily and a gun that's large enough that I can um, consistently train with it. <laughs> because the right. really tiny ones, you can hide them great, but if you practice very long, the recoil will just hurt your hand and you might not be able to practice as long. Uh, so you have to find that sweet spot. And I feel like that's different for everybody. Uh, right now I carry the SIG P365 and that's kind of right in the right spot for me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and I think you made a great point there is that I've, I've talked to a lot of folks and, and even working in a, in a facility where we sell firearms, people want to come in, I'm going to learn to carry and they want to buy the smallest gun. I said, we have any practice, any training? No, I don't need that. I just want to carry the gun. And I'm like, <laughs> you're better off buying a larger gun that you will practice and train with and and learn how to shoot that firearm efficiently and those skills will transfer much better over to the smaller gun than if you try to do this vice versa so mm -hmm. yeah and and some of this they, now they have you know in the last four or five years they brought out stuff like the sig 365 where it's a, a good compromise in that process so mm -hmm. uh, let's go back to the benefits again I, I think i saw where you went out recently to gun site and trained with a bunch of other ladies i did yes it was so, so fun Talk a little bit about the benefits of that camaraderie, because one thing I see in ladies' classes is they have so much more fun than the guys do. I mean, it's like it's immediate friends. They're lifelong buddies after that. I mean, that that is something that you wouldn't expect from a lady going to a class. Most of them are nervous because they think it's going to be ruled by a bunch of, you know, police or law enforcement guys and stuff. But if you get into an all ladies class or an all ladies event, talk a little bit about the the friendships that you make there. Yes, it was very fun. And I do feel like those women are my friends now. Um, it's just a good community, the gun community. And I don't know, every woman there was eager to learn and have fun. And I found that we were encouraging each other. So it was less competitive and more camaraderie. Yeah, um, yeah we had we did have a little competition that we did. But after each woman, woman went, there were high fives and like, good job. And yeah, yeah it was a great experience out there. You see that a lot because I know a lot of guys that I practice with and train with, I mean, I've taken a lot of classes and, and some of the guys are in the class over and over again. And after a while you're like, okay, you're watching to see what they do. And then when you, when they, when you beat them, you go and you rub it in a little bit, but that's not the case with the ladies. It's their cheerleaders. They're really cheering you on in that aspect of that. And so, um, you know, it's, it's been great to see those differences and stuff. And, and, you know, we do like our powwow that we have every year. And those ladies just bond over this three day weekend. They bond and, and they go out there and they, they talk to each other, they text each other, they communicate throughout the year and stuff. They plan for next year and stuff. So um, I think a ladies are really missing out on an opportunity um, to do some of those training events. I, I know we had a, um, a one guy that called in last year from our power. I actually, earlier this year, he bought his wife a, um, an event, a, a spot in our powwow for 2023 and he was getting text messages from his wife the whole weekend this is all the best gift ever oh, actually great. called him to like gun talk radio which is a national radio syndicated show and tell him my wife is having the best time at this event <laughs> And she is just loving it. And Tom, with Tom Gresham, the host, is like, this is what you see. There's like a lady events at Gunside. You see these ladies just learning so much and being encouraged and knowing that they can do this. It's not a huge barrier for them if they will, you know, just branch out a little bit and get out of their comfort zone and do one of these ladies events and stuff. So mm -hmm. kudos to you for doing that. That's a great facility out there <laughs> at Gunsight. Um, our, our facility build out is kind of modeled after them, so we're always great to see okay. what they do out there. And that type of stuff. So, all right. So I've got one last question. Question here. So, 
now that you've been in this world for a few years, um, there's still a lot of ladies out there that aren't 100% convinced they need to carry your firearm on them as much as possible. So talk a little bit about why you feel it's so important that ladies take that step to get training and learn to carry that firearm as much as they can. Yes, I think it's more important than they might realize. Um, because even in the safe area, um, things can happen, even in broad daylight. Well, for me, something happened not too long ago. I think it was last summer. I was driving to get to the seamstress to get a dress hemmed. And there was this odd looking guy who didn't seem fully with it, just kind of loitering by the door. And I remember feeling uncertain about him. So I did a lap, I circled and I waited a little bit. I drove back and he was still there, same thing. So I, I parked my car and I sat and I looked straight at him and I just watched him to let him know, hey, I know you're here. And he, he saw me and he eventually got uncomfortable. He, at least he looked uncomfortable and walked down a ways. So I thought, okay, I, I feel like I can go in and I have my firearm with me. Um, got my dress hemmed and I was coming back out. Well, he was back. So I talked to the shop owner and um, her husband walked me out um, and, you know, looked at the guy just to make sure. But I mean, nothing happened and I was safe, but I was glad that I had my firearm on me. And I think this is common with a lot of women. A lot of men that I talk to, if you ask the question, um, do you ever feel concerned about your safety in public or how often do you? A lot of men say never, but in a room full of women, I think most, if not all the hands would go up because we've all had that strange experience where either we're being followed or someone's not respecting our boundary when we say no. And it's just important to be able to back up your what you say with action um, and just be able to protect yourself if you need to. Obviously, it's last resort, but... Right we all want to be safe. Yeah. And I think you, you, you hit on something that I really liked there. You said that safe community aspect of the stuff. And that's something that I just talked about recently in my blog. We we're talking about 22 long rifle for self-defense. And, and what I said in there was that, yes, you may live in a safe community where there's not a lot of violent crime and that type of stuff. And you may feel secure in that environment, but it's not. And, and this, I try to say this to all the classes that I talk to. It's not, what are the chances of something happening, something bad happening? It's what's at stake if something bad happens and you cannot protect yourself. And so that's what we have to kind of shift that mindset. Well, I live in a safe community. That's not the point. Bad things happen in safe communities all the time. I mean, and you just look at some of the things that that if you really look at news stories, you see what happened in my neighborhood. It's like, oh, that should never happen in my neighborhood. Well, it does. And that right. person walking around your neighborhood or driving around your neighborhood at one point if something bad happened in your neighborhood. So it's just a matter of, of, you know, looking at it from the standpoint of it's not if it happens, it's what happens or what are the ramifications if I'm not prepared. And I think that's a big shift that you kind of went into when you moved out on your own. It's like, okay, I'm, I'm probably in a safe area, but if something happens, I don't have a way to protect myself. And I think that's a mindset we got to really talk to these ladies about and say, it's not if, it's what happens if I'm not prepared to deal with that situation when it happens. So. Right. I agree. Totally agree. So tell everybody here where they can find uh, your your blog, your website, and all the stuff that you offer for the ladies out there. Okay, sure. Uh, my blog is elegantandarmed.com. And I'm on Facebook and Instagram as well under Elegant and Armed. And right now I do have um, some pop-ups. You can subscribe for my email list. If you do, you will get my concealed carry checklist, a list of everything you need before leaving the house. And you'll also get 10% off items in my store, um, which you might want to check out. I've got some concealed carry clothes on there and um, purses as well. Awesome. So that's fantastic. I, I think, you know, like you said, this this is a journey. It's not a destination. And, you know, you're you're doing a great job of pointing ladies in the right direction. Where can I start on this process? Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're just going to 
learn to be more confident in being able to carry their firearms, look stylish, be their part, be themselves. And I think that that's a fantastic uh, role that you're filling because there's not enough of those voices out there in the female community. Um, you know, we still deal with the 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 uh, miss that this is a guy environment, and I see more. <laughs> more classes with ladies in there and you know i'm watching these ladies taking these classes and they're sitting or shooting right next to me and i'm like i, I gotta be careful they're not really mean so <laughs> because they're so good at it and they're building their confidence and that's what we want we want them to be confident and comfortable carrying the firearms and really take it to that level where they are carrying their firearms on a regular basis and being safe so uh now i thank you very much for the opportunity to talk with you i think uh it's been a it's a, a fascinating world that you're uh, that you're dealing in or dealing with. And uh, is there anything else you want to say to the listeners out there? Um, no, just thank you for having me on. And it's been great. Everyone uh, take a class. <laughs> okay. so, all right. Thank you very much. Thank we'll you. Bye-bye.